lesson, the teacher engages students by reading a picture book called If You Hold a Seed, the story of a little boy who discovers the magic inside a seed. While they listen to the book, they hold a maple seed in their hands. After the read aloud, the teacher asks, how can that small seed that can fit in the palm of your hand grow into a towering maple tree? Then students respond in writing to a formative assessment where several explanations are listed. They choose the one they agree with and explain their thinking. This gives the teacher some insight into students' ideas at the beginning of the lesson. I think it's Flavio because you need the nutrients from the soil and the water so the plant keeps moist and also every living thing needs water. I agreed with Ashley because she said that that they needed um, sunlight, uh, more, mo mainly sunlight to grow. And I think that sunlight is important because plants get their food from sunlight because of um, using photosynthesis. And I think food is a main part of like, you know, living. Next, students spend time exploring maple seeds. They observe and draw them in their maple seed journal. Then they go outdoors to toss them in the air and watch them fall. The journal contains several other activities to try with the seeds. The role of the teacher is to watch and listen as students interact and ask probing questions about what the students are discovering. As the teacher reads the nonfiction book, Next Time You See a Maple Seed, students connect the information in the book to the activities in their journals. The teacher shares the chemical equation for photosynthesis and introduces vocabulary. Then students analyze and discuss a video which shows evidence that plants acquire their material for growth chiefly from air and water. Next, students read an article about how scientists and engineers at NASA are applying what is known about how plants grow to develop new technologies for growing plants on the International Space Station. Astronauts on the International Space Station are experimenting with a veggie plant growth chamber as they orbit 200 miles above Earth's surface. Instead of growing the plants in pots, scientists and engineers have developed a new technology called a plant pillow. The pillows are much lighter and less messy than soil. Because plants get their material for growth chiefly from carbon dioxide and water, traditional soil is not necessary. To elaborate, the teacher asks the students to use what they've learned to brainstorm designs for a greenhouse on Mars. At the end of the lesson, students revisit the question, where does the stuff come from that makes up a maple tree? This time, students must provide evidence from the lesson to support their answer. Students reflect on how their ideas have changed, and the teacher uses the students' written responses to assess their understandings about photosynthesis. Well, I thought Ashley was the right one because you need sunlight to grow plants. And you can't grow plants without light, but then I was wrong because Jack was really right because you need water and air to grow plants. In this lesson, we've been learning about maple trees, but what I'm going to be talking about right now applies to any type of plant. So we're going to, so we were learning how a plant, what, how it grows. So I first thought it was the soil and water as as the soil gives the plant nutrients and then the water it and any living organism needs it mm -hmm. but after the lesson that i learned is that it's not that it's the air and the water which and the sunlight which will mix it up which would create using the process of photosynthesis mm -hmm.